All right, today I'm working at a uh, dairy farm here. And to quote Dave Chappelle, the milk has gone bad. So you can see here, box temp, 57, no good. So let's do our general checks. So let's go in here, check our vapor fan, which is pretty noisy. I don't know how good the audio is coming through, but she's noisy. Uh, no frost or freezing on the coil that I can see. Um, let's go do our check down here. So just make sure our condenser fan is running and our compressor. And as you can see by this little fluff ball here in the wind, it is running. We are running in a vacuum here and we have 93 head pressure. All right, so now let's go figure out what our pressure should be. So our suction pressure, to calculate that, we're gonna go desired box temp minus our 20 TD evaporator coil. So I'm looking for, let's call it a 34 Fahrenheit box temp. We're gonna subtract the TD and that's gonna give us 14 Fahrenheit. So let's quickly pull up a PT. And if we go here, 14 Fahrenheit actually equals 14 PSI. So I'm looking for a, around a 14 PSI suction pressure and then head pressure is going to be ambient plus 30 on this one that's our uh, condenser split so I got a 75 ambient we're gonna add 30 and that's gonna give us if I can do this properly 105 and then let's go pull up our PT again to go see what 105 Fahrenheit is so let's come right here, 105 is equal to 135 PSI. All right, so what I'm looking for is a 14 suction and 135 head pressure. Um, you'll notice in the video, the, um, my manifold gauge is set to 404A. Okay, so ignore the um, saturation temperature, I'm just, I'm at this point just looking at what the pressure is going to be. Um, the smart probe is set to 134. Uh, it's not going to affect any of the troubleshooting. I'm just looking to see what the pressures are so I can compare it to the chart. So based on the pressures we have, we're either restricted or we have a low charge. So I just checked the charge there. It's nine ounces. Okay. So the reason that I checked that, I want to see how big this leak is. If we do in fact have a leak. So at this point, a lot of people will just go right into the leak test, but what if there's not a leak? Like you're wasting an hour or whatever trying to find a leak. So I want to rule out there's no restriction. Okay, so how I do that is I, I add in some refrigerant and then we're going to bring the pressures to pretty close to where they should be. And then based on that, if the pressures are what they should be, it means we were low on charge. If I can't get this thing out of a vacuum or it stays really low on the suction side, that's telling me we have a restriction in the system. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead here and hit the fast forward. All right, so I'm about 145 head pressure here. A little bit high, but I just wanna see what's gonna happen to my suction side, and my suction side's a little bit low. 75 ambient. So we potentially have a small restriction. We definitely have a leak. Uh, we came out of the vacuum. Um, so let me just go check this condenser really quickly. It's probably plugged and look at that. She's plugged. So that's why we have the high head. So we're actually still undercharged. So I've put in about two ounces. So we probably are missing two or three ounces. So that's how small the leak is. So we're gonna unplug the unit. So we equalize and that's gonna bump up our suction pressure. So I'm hoping I don't have to put nitrogen in and we can find this leak. Work smart, not hard. So let's rip this guy apart. All right, I'm just gonna hit fast forward here, but as we know, most of the leaks are found up at this evaporator coil. So I'm gonna start by going to the most obvious places and let's go from there. All right, so I have 46 pounds of pressure on my suction and high side now, so that should be enough to perform my leak test. If not, uh, I'll be recovering most of that refrigerant and 
bumping up with nitrogen. So let's see if we can find the leak. And yeah, almost immediately we're finding the leak somewhere up here on this left hand side. Did not take long. It's somewhere up there on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do now is turn down the sensitivity. Let's see if we can kind of pinpoint and it's telling me the leak is in this far left row of u-bends so either top middle or bottom far left u-bend row all right nothing else is picking up here so now my goal is to pinpoint the leak Okay, I want to make my life easy, so I'm going to go to the lowest sensitivity, and let's see what that gives us. So this is telling us, yeah, leak, leak in the middle or the top, and no leak in the bottom, you bend. So now I'm going to go to the other mode here. So this mode's great for finding the actual leak. So I use this first mode as kind of a... Um, as a gauge to see where the leak is and now we're going to go pinpoint it. Alright so first we do we pick up the leak as soon as we pick it up we're going to zero the meter and once we zero that meter we're going to literally pinpoint the leak. Alright so it's telling me the leak is somewhere between the top and bottom. It's telling me it's not at the bottom of the middle U-bend. And it's telling me it's either at the top of the middle U-bend or the bottom of the top U-bend. So I literally just have to soap up two areas. We've pinpointed the exact location of the leak. Well, not exact. Now we're gonna hit the exact location. Let's soap her up. And all I gotta do is soap two little areas. I'm like, I'm gonna hit everything up because this spray nozzle is not super accurate but look at that so we said it was either the top of the middle u-bend or the bottom of the top u-bend and look at that the leak is on the middle u-bend right at the top right there somewhere around it's either between 11 and 1 o'clock on that u-bend so let me shoot it up again get the camera even closer and look at that, look at the bubble right at like, let's call that 11.30 or 12, between 11 and 12. Look at that. Pinpoint the leak, okay? This leak was found probably once I got the cover down in under 10 minutes. Pinpointed 100% exactly where it is. So I'm loving this new DTEC 3. Uh, it's been a great addition here. So let's go ahead and soap up, or sorry, leak test the condensing unit. Uh, I'm gonna soap up the Schraders because I find I always get false readings if I just go hit that up with the leak detector and then we're gonna go hit up all the joints that uh, the previous tech has brazed and all the factory joints let's make sure we don't have any leaks in this bottom section here and we're just gonna use that we're gonna use the mode where I look for the general area of the leak so I just changed the setting there and so far so good no leaks and always check if another technician's been there always check their joints always check those factory ones too we've had some leaks there on the compressors before and then just a quick sweep of the condenser making sure it's rare i find a leak in the condenser and looks like we are leak free in this condenser section we are all good to go to give our quote now All right, so we're going to send a quote off to the customer for a new evap coil, uh, a new evaporator fan. Actually, that evaporator fan is like five or six hundred bucks. So I'll probably quote a non OEM. Um, so potentially I could have tried to repair that leak. In my experience, when I try to patch up those evaporator coils, um, you'll just get another section that's going to leak in a couple more months. Um, you got to know your customer. You got to understand, hey, is this a customer that can afford callbacks or doesn't care about callbacks in this case it's a pretty big site uh, they don't want to see me back they want it fixed once they want it fixed properly 
Okay, so in this case, we're going to send a quote out for a brand new coil. 